a warm greeting, today is Tuesday, September 19, 2023. I am meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I will be specifically discussing a tropical wave that will be emerging tomorrow from Africa and has a high probability of becoming a tropical depression as it moves west to northwest through the tropical Atlantic this week. This video is of particular interest to residents of the Eastern Caribbean because there have been some changes in the forecast, and unlike what was anticipated in recent days, it is now predicted that this disturbance could travel farther west than previously forecasted. On the other hand, we have Hurricane Nigel, which continues its path over open waters of the Atlantic. It is currently a Category 2 hurricane, and it is possible that it may strengthen into a Category 3 hurricane before weakening and dissipating over open waters of the Atlantic without posing a threat to land areas. Additionally, in the coming days, we will be monitoring the area southeast of the United States, where the development of a low-pressure system is forecasted, which could become a tropical storm and affect regions in the southwestern United States, including the states of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. At 8 o'clock in the evening, the National Hurricane Center increased the chances of a tropical depression forming in this area to 30% over the next seven days. For more information on this disturbance, I invite you to stay tuned to my YouTube channel, as I will soon be recording a video to discuss this forecast. Now, let's move on to the forecast for the next tropical wave, which is currently over the African continent but very close to the coast. All global models show the future development of a tropical cyclone associated with this new tropical wave. The National Hurricane Center, as of 8 o'clock tonight, maintains a 70% chance of a tropical depression forming. It is very possible that over the weekend or early next week, we will have a tropical depression moving through the tropical Atlantic. In recent days, I have mentioned two possibilities. The first is that it takes a path over open waters of the Atlantic, staying well away from the Caribbean. The other scenario, although less likely, is that it could travel farther west and reach the Caribbean in the long term. In recent days, I have mentioned that the more likely scenario is for it to stay northeast of the Caribbean. However, the second, less likely scenario has gained more support from the models today, at least in the afternoon runs. But remember, this is a long-term forecast, and in the coming days, we will see many variations in the forecasts. The important thing is to watch with calmness because there is currently no real threat to the Caribbean. The most significant change we have seen today is that in recent days, most models predicted that the Bermuda high-pressure system would strengthen significantly, to the point that when this disturbance moves west through the tropical Atlantic, it was expected to turn northward. The models suggested that a strong high-pressure system in this area would essentially block the path of this tropical wave and direct the system northward over open waters of the Atlantic. However, this afternoon, we have seen significant changes in the forecasts. For example, look at the difference in the location of the high-pressure system compared to what it was today. In the afternoon, the models predict that this high-pressure system could be displaced a bit further north and east. Under this scenario, it would allow this disturbance to move further west. It's definitely a very significant change between these two solutions, and we need to see if this is a trend or if the midnight forecast today reverts back to the idea from the past few days. The reality is that with this change, the chances of it moving farther west have increased, although most global models continue to predict that it will pass northeast of the Caribbean. This is with the exception of the GFS model, which continues to predict that the tropical wave will take longer to develop. A weaker system would move farther west. In the afternoon run today, it's not until next Tuesday that it develops into a tropical depression. It does so just east of the Lesser Antilles, which would bring this future cyclone into the Caribbean region. However, again, this is not a reason to be alarmed in the Caribbean because the GFS model has performed poorly in recent months. Nevertheless, this is a possibility, and that's why we continue to monitor this tropical wave closely. On the other hand, we have the European model, which has a quite different forecast. The European model already has a well-defined low-pressure system by this Thursday, so it develops this tropical wave faster. Although this afternoon it maintains a predominantly westward trajectory over the next 7-9 to nine days, it continues to keep this disturbance at a safe distance from the Caribbean region. Remember that during this season, the European model has been the best at predicting cyclone genesis and the paths of these tropical cyclones. We will also be closely monitoring the European model because it has had a significant change in the trajectory of this disturbance. For example, during the midnight run yesterday, it had the location of this disturbance in this area, and in today's run, it has a trajectory much further west. It has readjusted its trajectory further west and south, which puts the northeastern Caribbean at greater risk. We will be monitoring this trend in the coming days. It's very important to note that this trend is not only seen in the European model but also in the German model. Now, it has a trajectory much further west and perhaps approaching the northeastern Caribbean. 
Similarly, the UK model in the afternoon today also has a trajectory quite westward. Again, even though this is a long-term forecast, it's important to pay attention to this upcoming tropical wave, especially to the changes that will occur in the forecasts of global models. For example, in the ensemble of the European model in the afternoon today, the majority still predict that this future cyclone will likely stay away from the Caribbean. However, look at the large margin of error and the different scenarios, from paths moving northward in the Atlantic to paths moving northwest, passing far from the Caribbean. Something we haven't seen in recent days is that some ensemble members now have this future cyclone possibly moving through the Caribbean area. However, we are talking about only 10% of the European model ensemble members, so the first scenario, in which it stays away from the Caribbean, continues to be the most likely. Compare the dramatic change that has occurred between the ensemble members of the European model. These are the trajectories from the afternoon today compared to what it had during the midnight run yesterday. We see a significant readjustment toward a much more westward trajectory. We also have the ensemble members of the GFS model, the majority of which maintain a trajectory quite westward. This is because they keep this disturbance much weaker and do not develop it until early next week when it is moving close to the eastern Caribbean. In this forecast, we also have two scenarios, from a path passing far northeast of the Caribbean to a path further west, where some members keep it weak for a longer time. In this case, approximately 40% of the GFS ensemble members bring this future disturbance to the Caribbean, while 60% maintain a northwest trajectory. Although in this case as well, the GFS model shows that the first scenario is the most likely, we have also seen in the afternoon run today, compared to what it had during yesterday, a significant change in showing trajectories much further west than what was forecasted during the midday run today. In summary, it is important to continue monitoring this tropical wave as there are two scenarios. The first and most likely is that it maintains a northwest trajectory, passing far from the Caribbean. But we have seen significant trends in the models showing a more westward trajectory, which we need to closely monitor in the coming days. The important thing is that this system is still 7 to 9 days away from approaching the Caribbean region, so we have many days to observe calmly. At the moment, there is no reason to be concerned. Here on Hurricane Info, I will continue to monitor its development and changes in the forecasts of different global models so that you don't miss any of the videos I will be recording in the coming days. I invite you to subscribe to my channel by clicking the red button below the video that says subscribe. Then, click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new content. I hope you all have an excellent week. Until next time.